Hello, everyone. I am Amy Kong. I wanted to welcome you to the fourth episode of ARIA. ACE stands for Asian Code of Etiquette. I'd like to introduce you to my co-host, Teresa. Oh my God, thank you, Amy. And again, my name is Teresa Placio smith and I'm the Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer for Home Services of America. And the AAPI community is so diverse that it's important for agents working with specific subgroups to understand their cultural nuances. And by examining etiquette, we're gonna be able to provide a better understanding of the cultural values, resulting in stronger relationships with our clients. Excellent. In this fourth episode of ACE, we'll be covering gift giving. One of my favorite things. There is a lot of curiosity about when it's appropriate to give cash instead of actual gift. So I'm excited to talk about this today. And this is definitely an interesting topic for me, you know, and I've heard all kinds of things. So I am really interested to learn and to hear what the norms are for the different AAPI subgroups. So let us know, Amy. <laughs> I know for myself, prefer gift giving, uh, but I know for certain holidays like the Chinese New Year and birthday or some big accomplishment like graduation, wedding, uh, baby shower, you know, cash is normally preferred that they can buy whatever that they want. Well, that's so interesting. So I have a question. If I was working with, I'm an agent working with a Chinese client and it's my very first time and I'm invited to their house after the deal's closed, what would you recommend that I give them? <laughs> interesting. Um, I usually do the seven essentials. Uh, what seven essentials means that, you know, once you start a family, these seven items usually are the most important thing and the first things that you needed, which include a fire log, right? The wood, right? And then rice, oil, salt, sauce. You know, if you go luxury, you can do an exo sauce instead of a soy sauce, vinegar and tea. So that's seven essential. Usually it's very much welcomed by a Chinese family. And uh, of course you wanted to put a red envelope in there as well. But you know, you don't have to put a lot of money in there because you know, we're a poor agent. We don't have a lot of money. So maybe at least $1, you know, you can never give a red envelope out without anything inside, okay? But of course we never give a clock, especially for seniors birthday or when you're visiting someone sick, never bring cookies or crackers. So those are the little tips. Very interesting. And I know you already mentioned that for gift giving, bring a red uh, envelope. Mm -hmm. And I know that you do that in the Chinese New Year as well, give money, right? But mm -hmm. are there other occasions outside of real estate and or the Chinese New Year where you would give money uh, mm -hmm. in a red envelope? And is it okay to uh, ask how much for each situation is really kind of a norm or a good um, gesture? Well, it's hard to say how much is appropriate. You know, it just comes from your heart, right? Heart. Whatever that you wanted to give. But surely the reason why we give all these red envelopes is because red color is a symbolic of, you know, happiness and good future, that kind of stuff, right? The envelope itself is just like an, an, an something to hold the money. Right. So um, for occasion wise, as I mentioned earlier, that, you know, graduation, birthday, all kinds of celebrations, you can always give that. Well, I love it. That's great. Thank you so much for sh uh, for expanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love our conversation, Teresa. And I wanted to bring on someone who I think has great insight into the Filipino culture, which is our very own executive director of ARIA, Miss Hope Edwal. Welcome, Hope. Hi everyone. Hi, my favorite ladies, Amy and Teresa. I was just listening to a fascinating conversation about this, uh, you know, kind of like gift giving within the Asian American um, culture. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of nuances, um, not just in the Chinese community, but certainly in subcultures that exist within um, Asian Americans in general. Oh, well, thank you so much for joining us for this fun and interesting topic. And, you know, what holidays and occasions do Filipinos usually think is best for gift uh, giving cash as a gift instead of a present? 
Uh, I would say that most people, a little bit of history about the Filipino culture. Um, most people don't realize that the Philippines was colonized by Spain for almost 500 years. So there is a lot of Spanish influence within the culture, more, more so I would say Spanish influence than um, the neighboring Asian kind of like countries. Mm. That's why our last names are typically kind of like Hispanic sounding. Um, and, um, and that's why um, the Philippines has, I think 80, 85% um, when it comes to the religion, um, Roman Catholic is, is probably the dominant religion there. Um, that is because of the, um, uh, the Philippines being a colony of Spain and having that influence. That said, um, if you take a look at traditional Filipino holidays, it very much mirrors Christian holidays just because of the Roman Catholic um, dominance within the Philippines, right? So you'll have the Christmas, you'll have um, you'll have Easter. Easter is very big in the Philippines. Um, the whole country virtually will shut down for um, for Holy Week because um, they truly um, the, the the country actually celebrate. You know, kind of like memorializes this as Holy Week. Um, and so Easter is very big. Um, there is a lot of gift giving that that occurs um, during Easter, um, and and also again your your typical like Christmas um, and New Year's. And because of the blend of cultures that um, have just influenced um, the Philippines predominantly against Spain and then China, you'll also see this blend in some of the celebrations. So for example, I think we got this from, from the Chinese culture. Um, Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, during New Year's, you should fill your pockets with coins. And the belief is that if you have coins, then you'll have money all year round. Um, so again, there's the, there's that money concept again, um, and money is well. Amy had said money is preferred in many of the Asian subcultures. I think um, it's it's also just being aware of. Sometimes you know, folks would say um, either cash is preferred or gifts is pref gifts are preferred and all of that stuff. I mean, I think with the Western influence within uh, the, the Filipino American culture, um, there's certainly now also the movement of um, being more sort of like Westernized when it comes to gift giving. But in, in very, I would say traditional, um, I would tend to agree with Amy that cash um, is, is preferred. I don't see a lot of red envelopes unless um, that particular family is, is heavily influenced or have some Chinese background within their family. But hey, giving giving cash in a white envelope is, is expected. It doesn't have to be a red envelope. It could just be even a, hey, uh, you know, envelope that um, your parking ticket envelope that you can stick cash in there. Doesn't matter, cash is king. Um, one thing though that i remember this from from uh, my my aunties and my mother and maybe this is amy something that you could relate is that if you are giving a wallet or a purse mm -hmm. make sure you actually put money in it and that's supposed to be good luck because then the person who you're giving the wallet or the purse to will never ever run out of cash I, I, I think that is so interesting and I'm going to try it because I love that whole idea. I love those the cultural nuances that you're bringing in. And I've actually been to a Filipino wedding and oh. I remember when they people pin money. Pin money, on, yes. yes. So yes. what's that about? Share that a little bit. Yeah, about that. yeah, there is. Um, that was a very traditional, um, traditional uh, wedding then that you, yes, so the money tree, right? So the couple dances um, and, you know, for however many songs. And the idea is for the guests to pin money 
both on the bride and the groom's clothing, right? And so this is going to be seed money for, for them to perhaps um, you know, buy a home or in preparation for whatever they're going to be doing. But yeah, I mean, and those songs um, could could last for like, you know, five or six songs. So that's six songs times five minutes. That could be 30 minutes of, you know, folks pinning uh, money into um, their 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 wedding outfits and all of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 fascinating. And um, and I don't know if other cultures do that, but certainly, I mean, that people come prepared, right? People either, um, or, or either the, the wedding party has like um, safety pins already that's prepared for that particular dance, or there are, you know, bobby pins or, or, or whatever to use it to, to pin. Uh, but it is quite fascinating if that's the first time you've ever um, seen it. it's like, what are they doing? Why are they putting money on their groom and their bride's clothing? But supposed to be good luck and helping them out um, on whatever they would need to start a family and to start a life together. That's kind of interesting, Hope. I'm just wondering, does the bride got the chance to choose the length of the song? I, if I'm a bride, I would choose the longest song possible. I know, right? I don't know. I mean, you know, Filipinos, they love to sing, they love to dance and all of that stuff. So if you're ever, ever invited to a Filipino wedding, just be prepared to be there for a long time. Uh, because, you know, just the dance and all of the traditional stuff that goes on with the ceremony and all of that stuff. But, yeah. yeah. So Teresa, you can tell just the envelope and the money giving portion it, the, within the AAPI subgroups, there are so many differences, right? Hope said that the envelope ha does not have to be red, but for the Chinese, if it's anything that is celebrating, right? You definitely need to have a red, red envelope. A white envelope means funeral. Oh, so okay. just yeah. FYI. But, yeah. Hope, thank you so much for sharing these interesting and amazing stories. All right. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Oh, my God. Yeah, thank you so much. I really love, first of all, there were so many th takeaways that I learned from, you know, the, the uh, seven essentials. Uh, beautiful. I did not know that. And that's a great idea for gift gifting. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the red envelope, the story behind it. Hope I'm definitely going to fill my pockets up with money, and certainly anyone can pin me anytime. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you for our next episode where we will talk again on our very own Mr. Alan Jiang about drink or not to drink. So, that will be another fun episode. See you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.